On this episode of Canine Corner, we're talking pet first aid for National Pet First Aid Awareness Month. Plus, we'll stop by an adoption party for K911 Rescue, and we'll introduce you to this adorable girl who's looking for a forever home. All this coming up right now on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Chertanich, your host for Canine Corner, the show that your dog will give two paws up. We have a bow wow rific show for you today. Did you know that April is National Pet First Aid Awareness Month? Don't worry, I didn't know either. But we have some tips for you, courtesy of Jean Brusevich from Tranquil Pet. And K911 Rescue through a huge adoption bash at Cosmic Brewery. We'll take you there. And while we were there, we met some adorable rescue dogs who are looking for their forever homes. I'm with Shelter Hope Pet Shop, Santa Clarita, and we're a nonprofit rescue pet shop organization. We're trying to replace all the puppy mill pet shops in all of our malls. So we act as a pet shop, but we're rescuing from our local shelters and working with other rescues to get them homes and off the streets and in their forever families. So this is Nick, and Nick just arrived. Um, he's approximately 10 weeks old. They listed him as a minpin mix. We think there's something else in there though. He's gonna grow to be a nice medium size. He's already very sweet. His foster already is in love with him and his sister both. And he's just, they're very uh, mild. He's a little shy, but once he gets to know you, he's very sweet. He just wants to snuggle. They're doing really good with potty pad training as well. And so they just got fixed and they're chipped and ready to go. But this is Mariah, and again, she's approximately 10 weeks old. It's Nick's sister, so we think uh, minpin mix possibly something else maybe in there she's gonna be a little bit smaller than Nick I would say uh, and she's even a little bit more shy but what a love she just wants to snuggle so she might be better in a home that's a little more quiet maybe older children or um, somebody that's gonna have some patience with her but very sweet so this is Casper Casper is a little terrier mix and he's approximately two years old He's a great dog. He's um, He would be a great family dog. He's got a lot of energy. He's pretty athletic, actually. That's the one thing I would say is that we need to make sure that he's in a secure home because when he gets going, he can get going pretty fast. So um, we just need to make sure he's secure. But other than that, he loves to play with kids. He's great with other pets, potty trained, walks great on a leash, did great in a car ride, rode all the way down here with us today. And you'll have to see him beg. He knows how to beg, and he's just the cutest thing. If you are interested in adopting Nick, Mariah, or Casper, please contact Shelter Hope Pet Shop by visiting shelterhopepetshop.org. We're an organ organization that's working. We rescue a lot of animals and, and mainly from research labs. We rescue a lot of beagles. Beagles happen to be, of all the dogs used in research, 96% um, of them are beagles. And for the same reasons that they're friendly and, and really, um, extremely um, forgiving uh, as pets, they're also used for those same reasons in labs, unfortunately. So um, we're working on legislation to get dogs and cats out of research labs. We have a Beagle Freedom Bill. And we're also, we rescue dogs like Penny. Um, and she's a, a sweet five-year-old uh, Staffordshire Terrier. She um, was a bottle-fed baby with our organization, so we've known her her whole life. And she um, was happily placed in a home, but they returned it to us about a year ago. So she's looking for a new forever home. She would be great with kids, um, other dogs, you know, of her size or even small dogs. She seems to get along really well with. She walks great on a leash. She's just a real sweetie and real mellow. If you are interested in adopting Penny, please contact the Rescue and Freedom Project at bfp.org. So, so so cute. I would adopt all of those dogs if I could, but I think I would have to run that by Popeye first. In the meantime though, you should adopt them. Now that we've met some of the adoptable dogs who were at the event, let's learn more about the event itself and the organization behind it. It was a big day for K911 Rescue and Fix and Fido's. 
So we're at Cosmic Brewery. Peanut is finally ready for adoption. Peanut is the first rescue pup for K911 Rescue and Fix and Fidos. The rescue organization started by Casey Montoya and Sabrina Soma. We are holding a mega adoption for a lot of dogs that are unwanted. Uh, this is Peanut. We call her Princess Peanut. And the party is in honor of her. She's K911's first rescue. And K911 Rescue and Fix and Fido's first rescue was a special one. Peanut was at North Central Animal Shelter and she had she was hit by a car. She had a broken leg and she was there for two months. Um, she was set to die at four o'clock and Casey Montoya went to go pull her from the pound and we just started rehabilitating her. And rescuing her from the shelter was only the beginning. The reason why it's taken so many months for her to be up for adoption is because she needed physical therapy. She needed a lot of physical therapy because she wasn't walking on her leg. And her foster mom thinks now she's ready to find a home. And in honor of Peanut being ready for a forever home, Cosmic Brewery brewed a beer in her honor. It's a peanut butter stout. 100% of those proceeds are going to be donated to Peanut. Well, it's actually donated to K911 in honor of Peanut. Peanut was not the only dog up for adoption at the event. Local rescue organizations brought adoptable dogs. And in addition to featuring adoptable dogs, there were also many dog businesses on hand. Ani Hole Photography was taking photos of the pups and Good Choices Dog Training was also there. We also had a chance to speak with an organization who helps reunite lost pets with their owners. Basically our, our form to help uh, people that have lost dogs, uh, that we get calls about stray dogs maybe running around, loose ones. Uh, so we kind of form, we have formed a team, we've got all kinds of a variety of experience so we'll go after them. And, figure them out, get them caught, get them safe, bring them either back home or uh, scan them for a chip, you know, whatever is necessary to, to, to bring them in. From Lost to Found is a team who works together to help track down the missing pups. One of, one of our members is uh, founder of a rescue, German Shepherd Rescue, um, and then we have Aaron here who's a registered veterinary nurse technically, um, and then I'm basically a dog catcher guy. <laughs> I, I hunt them down, I figure them out, um, I often know kind of what they're going to do before they do, and so with a, you know, with a whole team effort, we can definitely pin them down and, and get them home safe. In addition to the pet companies in attendance, people and pups were helping raise some money for a pup who was adopted during a rescue event at Cosmic Brewery. Less than a year after his adoption, Frito's family found out that he had cancer. He just went through 20 days of radiation treatment, um, and it was a little rough, like the week after. But you know, you see that he lost all the hair on his face, but he's feeling a lot better. Um, his skin feels better, and he's just back to his normal self now. Yep, and just checkups to see how he's doing. But he also he also had his spleen removed <laughs> in the middle of that, which um, he had two masses in the spleen that could have ruptured and we found them just in time through the cancer screening stuff. So if we hadn't found the cancer, then we wouldn't have had the spleen removed. So he's been through a lot. He's a trooper. He is. He was actually, he was also homeless for a year before we adopted him. Greedo's family has a GoFundMe page for those who would like to help donate to his care. The page is help for Brito's cancer treatment. And at the event, Brito's furry friends came together and ran a kissing booth to help fundraise for him. We have some um, dogs here that are going to, I guess, give out smooches. Um, they're kind of working for Brito, helping him out. And even with all of the wonderful people and organizations promoting adoption, there's still work to be done. I've actually been surprised in the last few months, ever since I've told people, co-workers, friends about our nonprofit, how many people are still seeking out breeders to get specific dogs? They have this perception in their mind that you can't find a purebred at a shelter, and it's just not true. And that perception is what K911 Rescue and Fix and Fido's is working to change. What we do is we rescue handicapped dogs, senior dogs, and stray dogs. And we rehabilitate them, and then we adopt them out at Cosmic. So if you want a dog, like, go to the brewery. Whether it was stopping by the kissing booth for a quick smooch from an adorable pup, or sipping on a peanut butter stout, or meeting a rescue dog, the message was clear that adoption is the way to go.
What people need to realize is instead of seeking out breeders, seek out your true love at a shelter because they are there waiting for you. If you are interested in adopting Peanut, donating, purchasing a K911 Rescue or Fix and Fido's t-shirt, or would like to find out about upcoming events for K911 Rescue and Fix and Fido's, you can visit either K911Rescue.com or FixandFidos.com. A big thank you to K911 Rescue for having us. And we have a treat for you guys. There were so many adoptable dogs at this event that we could not fit them all in one episode. So be sure to tune in next month because we will be featuring even more adoptable dogs from the K911 Rescue event. We're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. There's much more doggone fun when we come back. Meetings are, well, meetings. Unless, that is, you're meeting in Torrance. Torrance has more than 67,000 square feet of total meeting space. Plus, we've got 1.5 miles of our very own beach, amazing Southern California weather, and are situated just 15 minutes from LAX. And after all your meeting and greeting, don't let the opportunity to explore pass you by. Do some team building and express your artistic side. You could even become a master chef or just eat like one. And of course, make time to stop and smell the roses and spend as much time as you can getting in touch with nature. Greet the day and meet the Torrance way. So, are you in? Welcome back to Canine Corner. I'm your host, Rhiannon Trutanich. So April is National Pet First Aid Awareness Month. Pretty cool, huh? And one of the best ways to be a responsible pet owner is to know pet first aid techniques. Jean Brusovich from Tranquil Pet is here now to talk to us about the benefits of knowing pet first aid and give us some tips. Knowing pet first aid has even more benefits than making you a prepared pet owner. You replace panic with the, a knowledge and a can-do attitude. Um, it enhances your pet training and skills. Um, you could save money on vet bills because you may find something that rather than waiting until your annual pet visit with the vet, you'll find something sooner. Um, and it gives your pet and you a greater, um, unhappier, healthier life together. Jean teaches pet first aid workshops that cover everything from CPR to heat stroke care. I can't show you on, on, on film the pet safety techniques for like CPR and rescue breathing and some other um, things like that because it's a hands-on class, but I can talk to you about some pet safety techniques. And it is important to be aware that knowing pet first aid is not a substitute for veterinary care. So anything that we're talking about too in terms of pet first aid isn't a substitute for vet going care. To, that's you're, right. You're going to want to get, that's right. it's just going to help your pet stay in a better condition until right. you can until get you them can the get proper them. care. Yes. Knowing who to contact if your pet ingests a toxin can make a big difference. If they've ingested the toxin and you know what it is and if either they've thrown up or you have it, you could take a sample to your vet okay. to have the vet um, you know, test it to tell you what to do. The other thing is, I've had some people say, well, I'll just call 911. Um, while the 911 operators would be very happy to assist, they are not trained in toxicology. Right. So there are a couple of places, the ASPCA has a, a poison helpline as well as the pet poison helpline. Okay. Those are um, 888 or 800 numbers and they can help you. The first thing... Is there a fee for those? There is a fee for those two. So really the first thing you should do is if it's daytime um, or your vet is open, you should call your vet. If they're closed, try your 24-hour emergency. If you can't get through to them, then I would call one of those other two numbers because those people are trained. And if your dog is injured, there are things you can do to slow down or stop the bleeding while you get him or her to the vet. If they get cut and they're bleeding, you can take um, gauze. If you don't have gauze, what I do is I use like old washcloths or hand towels and put that on the wound. Uh, rinse it with water if you have it and then put that over the wound. Um, don't pull it away because if it starts to clot, that can remove that clot and start the bleeding again. So just keep putting another one over it. 
one of the, if you don't have gauze for wrapping it, uh -huh. one thing that um, I think is a, a really great idea is to use saran wrap out of your kitchen oh, because wow. that stuff sticks together so you wrap it around the body or wrap it around his leg and that will hold everything in place until you get to the vet office for them to remove it and do whatever they need to do. If he has a, a cut on his side here and uh -huh. you wrap it, see if you could rest him on that side on the car because his body weight will right. also help slow the blood flow as opposed to, you know, because I would have thought yeah, to just have to him it. resting on the other side. But if he's resting on that wound, as long as he's not in you know pain, it will help stop the blood flow. So that's another little story. He's all up here. I got them all. <laughs> I'm sort of. Popeye, are you going to do the same for me? And pet first aid is not just about knowing what to do in a crisis, but being proactive about your pet's health. So um, the other thing that I have also that I go over with you is a wellness uh, assessment. And I have a form that I give you, and, and I suggest that people um, do a wellness check on their dog every month, just so it will give you um, it will give you um, what their what their uh, breathing rate is, what their pulse is. Um, check on their capillaries to see how the blood flow circulation is in their bodies. Jean says being consistent is an important part of the wellness check. When you're checking on their breathing rate, they're always in a resting. For the breathing rate and the pulse, those are always in a resting position. Don't go out running your dog and then start taking their breathing rate and go, oh my God, it's too high. So they have to be in a resting position. You can check your dog's breathing rate on a monthly or even weekly schedule. For the breathing rate, you would watch the chest rise and fall. And that's one? Yes, that would be one. Okay. That would be one cycle. So you would count in the number of cycles in 15 seconds. Okay. And then you multiply that times four. And then that would number should typically fall between 10 and 30, and that is their resting heart rate. Okay. If it's lower or higher, you need to call your vet. In addition to monitoring your dog's breathing rate, you should also monitor his or her pulse. As far as their pulse, a normal pulse rate for a dog is 40 to 100 beats per minute. For a cat, it's between 80 and 140. Um, and you would test this on their femoral artery. Okay. And when you're testing it on the femoral artery, you count um, in six seconds, you count the number of beats in six seconds, you multiply that by 10. Okay. And that will give you their resting heart rate. Now, the other thing you do when you're testing it on their femoral artery, which is on the, the um, inside of their back leg, you don't use your thumb or your index finger because it can get confused with your heart rate. Oh, yeah. So I always use the third and fourth finger and just rest the third and fourth finger on the femoral artery okay. and then that will give you their resting heart rate. The wellness check should also include assessing your pet's blood circulation. It always should be a nice bright pink. Um, what you do is you lift the gum and you press up above the teeth on that area and you press, then you take it away and it should come back. It should, it'll turn white when you press on it and then when you let go, it should come back to being pink between one and three seconds. If it takes longer, that, sh that also is a test for how their blood circulation is going. Doing all of these things can help you detect changes and issues early on and stay on top of your pet's health. If you are interested in taking one of Jean's pet first aid workshops, please visit TranquilPet.com. Knowing pet first aid can definitely give you peace of mind as a pet parent, and hopefully it's the best advice that you never have to use. Jean is back with us now to talk more about pet first aid. Are there any resources that are easy to access for pet first aid? The Red Cross has a pet first aid app. It's free, you can download it from iTunes, and a couple of the things that they, they carry on that is, it gives you step-by-step -step emergency plans. Um, it ha if you travel with your pet, it has um, a pet locator where you can plug in the zip code of wherever you are and the vet offices or the emergencies will show up. Um, the other thing is you can also put your pet profile on there uh, with their meds and their picture and their, you know, for, um, in case they ever get lost, everything is right there. 
um, on, on your hand. And it also shows you how to create a pet emergency kit. What is the seven second rule? The seven second rule is you take the back of your hand and you place it on the ground, whether it's the asphalt or the street or the cement, and you have to be able to leave your hand, the back of your hand there for seven seconds. And I'm talking 1,001, 1,002, up to seven seconds. If you can't leave it there, then it's too hot for your pet's pads to walk on that ground. And the other thing to, to notice is a lot of people during the summer, because you know everybody's working, they walk their dogs in the evening after the sun goes down. I mean, that is great, but you still need to do that because if the sun, if it's been in the 90s and above, the ground has been absorbing that heat all day. So even when the sun goes down, that heat is still bouncing off of the ground. And because the dogs are so low to the ground, it's also hitting them on their belly. How can I tell if my dog is dehydrated? So you grab the skin between the shoulder blades and you pull up on it and you let it go. And if it springs back, that means he's hydrated. If it takes its time going down, or it stays up there tended, or it doesn't go down as fast, then I would watch out for that. Okay. What topics do you cover in your pet first aid workshops? In the workshop, you you will learn um, to learn to muzzle your dog because if they're injured, no matter how close you are with them, if they're hurt, they can hurt you because they're just responding to you know their pain. Um, so you'll learn to muzzle the dog. You'll learn to perform CPR and rescue breathing. Um, you'll learn to provide basic first aid, like we talked about, if they're bleeding or they get, you know, they go into shock. Um, you'll be able to learn how to manage urgent care situations, fractures, broken bones. Dogs have a very high tolerance for pain, mm -hmm. so they may have a broken limb, mm -hmm. but you may just think they're sprained because they're limping on it and. So you just need to, again, you need to watch the dog and you know check on those things. Um, you can, you'll learn how to care for heat stroke and um, frostbite, uh, managing poison, seizures, eye, foot injuries, um, and just you know generally prepare for disasters. When are your pet first aid workshops? Yeah, I, I do them monthly, but in April I am setting up a few more classes because the classes are limited to 10 people because there's a lot to cover and I want to make sure everybody gets the information that they need. Um, the classes are about four hours long. Um, normally they're $80 but because of the April Pet First Aid Awareness Month I'm reducing it to $70. Wow. And um, right now I have one set up for um, scheduled for at Camp Runamut on April 22nd, it's a Sunday, okay. um, from 10 to 2. Okay. And you can register online on my website. Okay. And I also have some other places that I'm finalizing, okay. so I'll send that to you and if you post it for people, then they can fit it into their schedules, see yes. if they can fit it into their schedules. And we can keep people updated throughout the month on social media as you, know, right. as you book more things. We can right. make sure to put that out as well so everyone can learn all of this, right. especially during April for National Pet First Aid Awareness right. Month. Right. If you are interested in taking one of Jean's Pet First Aid workshops, please visit TranquilPet.com. If you have a question, contact us and we'll be sure to get you the right answer. Call us at 310-618-5762 or email us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. Now, if you missed the rescue pups at the beginning of our show or are anything like me and just want to see the adorable dogs again, here's your recap. Nick is a 10-week-old miniature pincher mix. He's a little shy at first, but once he gets to know you, he's the sweetest. He absolutely loves to snuggle. Mariah is a 10-week-old miniature pincher mix. She's a super sweet dog. She's Nick's sister and is a little more timid than he is. She's a very mellow dog and would love a family to call her own. Casper is a two-year-old terrier mix. He has a great disposition and would make a great family dog. He gets along with children and other dogs. He's an athletic dog and would love a family to take him on walks. If you are interested in adopting Nick, Mariah, or Casper, 
please contact Shelter Hope Pet Shop by visiting shelterhopepetshop.org. Penny is a five-year-old American Staffordshire Terrier. She's a super sweet dog. She gets along with kids and other dogs. She would love to have a forever family to call her own. If you are interested in adopting Penny, please contact the Rescue and Freedom Project at bfp.org. If you want even more Canine Corner or just want to say hello or share an adorable photo of your fur baby with us, we always love to hear from you. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us here on Canine Corner. I'm Rhiannon Trutanich and we'll see you next time.